So we're doing a small interview about the coronavirus and how students... Special edition the coronavirus, the Dutch healthcare system and personal health. Today, I will be hosting this debate with three panel members, who, is, uh, who are uh, Professor Dr. Helmut Brandt from... We will all... In Could you introduce yourself, perhaps? <laughs> yeah. My name is Helmut Brandt. I'm here a Jean Monnet Professor of European Public Health, and my background is that I studied medicine in Germany and in Switzerland, worked in the public health service in Germany on local and ministerial level, later was head of an institute of public health like the RIVM in the Netherlands, and 10 years ago um, I made over the border and joined Maastricht University to help to educate the new leaders in public health that were needed. Okay, thank you. And then I'm also joined by Professor Dr. Christian Huber. Yeah, thank you. My name is uh, Christian Huber. I'm a professor in uh, uh, infectious disease control. I actually am a former student in uh, Maastricht. Uh, I did my medical uh, study here. Um, I'm also chairing the Department of uh, Social Medicine. And on the other hand, I'm also in the public health system. So I'm, ha I'm head of the Department of Infectious Disease Control of the Re Regional Public Health Service. All right, thank you. And then lastly, Professor Inge van Loo. Uh, yes, I am Inge van Loo. I'm working as a clinical microbiologist in the uh, University Hospital here in Maastricht. And I'm specialized in virology and infection serology. Then we're also joined in the other room by two students, Alex and Jan, from the Faculty of Health, uh, Medical and Life Sciences, I believe. Um, they will be taking questions in the chat regarding the coronavirus. We will also be answering any questions about UM and the coronavirus in that chat. Some of those questions will be well, shown to us here in the panel and we'll ask my panel members about it. Um, and then we will now go into a little video uh, with a street interview with students and then we'll start our little debate here. All right. We're doing a small interview about the coronavirus and how students are dealing with it and what are their concerns and what precautions are they t taking. So here we are with... Manuel, I'm a student at UCM, first year. Ralph, I'm from Germany. Uh, my name is Sofia. I'm from Romania. Victor, Munich, Germany. Uh, Sarah, I'm from the Netherlands. <laughs> Elisa Guidetti. <laughs> and where are you from? I'm from Italy and from Germany. I'm bilingual. I know about the virus that is, is a virus that was emerged in China, in Wuhan, and that it's uh, slowly taken over the world. Many people have been infected already, and that it causes a lot of panic. I know that it's spreading very fast and it's very, um, very serious matter that we have to attend, but um, I'd say that we shouldn't um, let it intervene with our lives and just try to keep going and be careful as always. I don't know really much because um, I don't I'm not that interested I just know that it started in uh, China in the province uh, in the city of Yuhan. Well I know that it's not that dangerous for us like for younger people who are healthy in general but that it's rather dangerous for elderly people or people who are who have health issues already and what I know is that it spreads quite fast yeah. and that basically what we heard in Germany is that in the end maybe 60 70 percent of the population will be affected by it will actually get it that's what I know from about the virus yeah. it won't affect us that much but I do take precautions like um, if I have to sneeze or cough I do it in my elbow or I wash my hands a little more often but I don't think the situation is that critical, and also the problem is that many events are cancelled. But well, I'd say that I'm uh, washing my hands more frequently and um, watching where I'm going and not going too much to public spaces. Uh, yeah, that's most. Yeah, that's the main thing actually. Are we taking any? Uh, well, yeah. My mom was just like, wash your hands and uh, like, just don't go to Germany. <laughs> What measures are you taking to prevent yourself from getting sick? Well, I'm, I'm not shaking that many hands anymore. I'm doing this one. This, this mm -hmm. gangster handshake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else? Yeah, I'm actually... Uh, I wash my hands more, more, more frequently and more... Yeah. And thoroughly. Thoroughly and... What, to be honest, I'm one of those that are not too worried yet. So I'm not taking too many measures to prevent myself from getting the virus. No, not at all, actually. 
except for the part that some things are might be cancelled, so you have to do some things from home, but mm, no, not that drastically. No. Up to this point, up to until today, not really, no. But I think it's going to impact me probably in the next few weeks. But um, How so? Probably online courses. I think the uh, uni is going to close so that we have online courses and maybe take home exams. That's going to impact my student life. But in general, I don't think so that it's going to impact it very much. Uh, well, I'm a bit afraid uh, due to the exam that will be in the MAC. So I don't know how many students there are in one uh, like uh, place. I, around 300, even more. Yeah, more, okay. So nobody knows if they actually have the virus because it's usually a period after you have the symptoms. You may not have temperature, then go to the, this exam and then like all the uh, people that were at the MAC also have the virus. Yeah, well, being a master's uh, alumni, I run my own business now. So what I do is I do presentations for other companies and I work with a lot of companies so I feel the effect in companies. Like s some companies in Cologne for instance, they, they have a meeting ban so you can't meet with them, only online. Some other companies, they don't have any more events so they don't require any presentations anymore so I lose some jobs there. But then again there's other industries where there's so much work to do that it covers up for the, for the leftover wor uh, vacant work now. For instance, consultancy firms for security who do evacuation plans and they have their business is booming right now. So I see a crazy change in demand and yeah, within my clients' work and well my 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 daily life of course is affected. Everyone's talking about it. It's like the topic number one. And I'm a big NBA fan for instance. That has been cancelled today, like the season has just been cancelled and I've never experienced something like this. So so we just watched a video of how students, what students think the and coronavirus is. In a sense of washing is. your hands. Now I'm going to relay these questions also to the people that may know a little bit more about it. Mm -hmm. So what is a virus and what is COVID-2019? Maybe someone could start off. Yeah, ma maybe yeah. to start in general, a virus is actually a particle which, is com which contains uh, an... Uh, membrane or envelope and some uh, um, genetic material inside it. Actually, it cannot replicate itself. It needs host cells to uh, cause disease. And that is a major difference with the bacterium, for instance. And as you can see here, this is also a difference in size between a uh, virus and the bacteria. As you can see, like this is then a bacterium and this is a virus. So it's, it's much smaller. Uh, and this is also, this is then able to invade your host cells. So, for instance, if you talk about coronavirus, um, then it will attach to your nose cells and invade your host nose cells and then cause, for instance, a cold or other symptoms. Okay. Um, so, what are the symptoms then of coronavirus or COVID-19? Well, it can be very much variable. I think it can di diverse from a mild cold to severe uh, pneumonia, actually. Really? Okay. And where is it dependent upon? Is it dependent on your age or your, your mental health or your physical health yourself? Or? No, well, we see that the most severe cases are elderly with severe underlying conditions. And the case fatality, case fatality rate is highest among these uh, groups. And so people, young people with maybe diabetes or some other disease or things that they have, is it problematic um, for them too? I'm not really aware of that. Actually, no, actually, actually, I think everybody ever, can, yeah. can, can get the virus, mm -hmm. so even if you're young or even if you're old, so the, the chance of getting the virus is not different, mm -hmm. but uh, the symptoms are really different. Okay. So especially above 80, 80 years of age, mm -hmm. there there is a real problem because those are, especially when there is underlying disease, uh, especially uh, when it's, for instance, with uh, lung diseases, etc., and, uh, and then there is a kind of gradient to young age and below 30, which well, are yes. most students mm -hmm. are uh, in that uh, age category, yeah. between yeah. 20 and 30. <laughs> it's um, very mild or in yeah. asymptomatic even. Okay, so, so those are mostly mild, mild mm -hmm. cases. And mild means like a common flu, flu Or even symptoms. common cold, I think. Or but that's actually interesting. So what is then the major difference between a common cold or flu and the coronavirus? Yeah, so they are two distinct viruses. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and maybe you can ask, uh, why do we do all these things when it's a little bit similar? Um, the difference is that, uh, of course, this is a new virus. So uh, especially when we started this whole idea, we didn't know that much about it. Uh, but when we look at it, it seems to be a little bit more uh, fatal than uh, the flu. Mm -hmm. So we think now it's about 1% to 2% fatal, especially so in those elderly and those vulnerable uh, uh, of old age. But uh, a major difference is uh, with flu is that where, where we look at flu, most of the people in the population are immune. So, or immune because we have flu every year. Uh, and on the, on the other hand, because we have a vaccination. Mm -hmm. And that's a major difference. So, uh, especially when we talk about coronavirus, uh, nobody has any immunity. So the whole population is uh, um, vulnerable to, to, to this the virus. Of course, there are some models that think that maybe when we don't do anything, about 20 to 50 percent of the population can, could be affected. Uh, and that's, uh, well, counting numbers then, because yeah, yeah. It's, it's getting up. Uh, and, and that's a problem, because uh, even with a severe um, yearly season of flu, uh, our healthcare system is, it, it's really challenging for a healthcare system to, to, uh, yeah, manage, to deal manage with that. Manage all those and, severe cases. And manage all those yeah, cases. Yeah. And when yeah. it's even more with coronavirus, that would be even more a challenge. So that's why we do still a lot of things to uh, delay spread and, and make it a bit uh, um, or mitigate, in fact, the, uh, the epidemic. Yeah. So would it also be, I mean, working on a vaccine, is it possible to have it anytime soon? A, a general question, perhaps? No, that is not something we can expect. So that, uh, a vaccine takes a lot of time to develop. And even when there would be a, a, a maybe a general vaccine, it would have to have has to be tested in humans. So that's something at least uh, a year from now. Mm -hmm. What we see, there are some possibilities to treat because it's a virus. It's not use. It's not no use to use uh, antimicrobial uh, therapy. But we have some uh, well possible uh, uh, well treatments that could do something. One of is actually an antimalarial um, uh, treatment. That's chloroquine. Uh, it might do something, and there are some antiviral uh, medication that might do something. But maybe you know more about yes, that. Yes, the one, one is uh, lopinavir ritonavir, which is used against mm. HIV as well. And, mm. and the third one uh, is randesivir, and that is, has been developed for MERS, which is also a coronavirus. Uh, but we find it nowadays in Saudi Arabia. Mm. Okay. Um, so, when just to have some basics down, of course, like when did... Uh, COVID-19 start, like just to... Yeah, well, it started in uh, December, mm -hmm. in December in uh, China, in the, the Wuhan region, of course. Everybody knows probably because there <laughs> was a lot of media attention, of course. It is suggested to start it, have started in a, in, a, in a market where a lot of animals are. Uh, it's not sure if that's really true. And there are quite some stories about what's the origin of the virus. Uh, we know that it's related to the virus in bats. But, uh, and there, there are stories about the pangolin or other animals that might be uh, in between host before it came to humans. But there are many questions still ahead, and I think that's not fully cleared out. So, I mean, there are many theories, and we should just say, we don't know. Let's we just don't look know. at what's exactly. happening. Exactly, we don't sure. not no. know. But we know, of course, that coronavirus are, well, uh, available uh, in animals, a lot of them. We, there are even a lot of uh, coronaviruses uh, available in humans as they also can cause the common cold. And we have two severe ones, as, as already said. 2003, we had the SARS virus, what was a coronavirus. That was, uh, well, we, we suffered 88,000 cases and about 10% died, but we could contain that uh, uh, immediately. And indeed, the MERS virus was even uh, more severe. It, it causes 30% of uh, death. But there, it, there is no, uh, not a lot of spread, fortunately. So it's really difficult to spread. So there are a lot of less uh, problems with that. So that also makes the virus then perhaps special in the case it's very highly contagious, but maybe the symptoms are not as, as severe. Then. But then why can't we take uh, the strategy from, from SARS in 2003 and apply it to this case? 
Well, actually, we tried uh, <laughs> uh, because it, at first we thought that especially uh, corona cases were those cases that uh, had a, a cough uh, and fever and a link to other corona patients so or a region where there are corona patients. And then we, we call that the containment phase. So mm -hmm. we really try to take all the cases uh, and from that case we look at the context and con contacts so the, the persons that are in contact with that case and when we we uh, isolate the case and quarantine the the context then it's in, in uh, then um, we are able to contain uh, this outbreak and that was actually what was used in SARS and that worked mm -hmm. but now we see that it's less possible because we see that even mild symptoms may cause coronavirus and then it's much more difficult to grasp these cases because uh, maybe oh, sorry, uh, yeah. maybe i can add that in the SARS, uh, which is which was um, which occurred in 2003 the highest transmission rate was amongst patients with a, a lower lung infection and uh, that's i think different now oh. it's an upper respiratory uh, the, infection. There were, actually we didn't see uh, Ex uh, upper respiratory tract infections. Hmm. So, what is then the? I, I don't know much about this. So, it's <laughs> these cases are not so uh, well identified mm. uh, compared to then uh, in the in the time. In so, a lot of cases remain hidden, mm -hmm. yeah. and when cases remain hidden, the spread can go on, and that's actually what the case is. So, that was yeah. why we see a lot of cases in Italy now, mm -hmm. but even uh, just ar across the border here in the region of Heinsberg in, in Germany, just close to Maastricht. Uh, also there, the, there was this situation. Uh, it started with a, with a man who had uh, the, the virus uh, while he was even under immunosuppressive uh, agents. Um, so he could also make a lot of virus. So when you are immunosuppressed, it's more easy to make a lot of virus. So you're more contagious. Um, and he was also, uh, during his uh, first 14 days, able to, uh, or still uh, visiting, the, the carnival festivals mm. that were uh, around. And that's, of course, so yeah. we have a super spreading patient and a super spreading event. And that really boosted the whole uh, outbreak, actually, just across the border. Um, but uh, there were a lot of cases so unrecognized. And yeah, then it's difficult to, to, to contain the whole outbreak. Yeah. And that's why we are now more in a mitigation phase. Yeah. So, but how does it spread then through through handshakes, of course, but uh, also by just sneezing? It, th there is not really a way to say like these things you cannot do and you'll be fine, right? Or oh well, uh, we still think that people that don't have complaints or symptoms uh, are the ones that uh, that are well not doing any, doing much in the spread of the disease. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, well, when you are sick, stay home and and. Uh, come back uh, on the streets when you're uh, free from symptoms. You can wash your hands. You can uh, um, well, there are there, so there are things you can yeah. do. Um, contacts are the ones. So you always need to get it from uh, someone that has the disease. So yes, and that's why droplets. I think that was your question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. droplets from sneezing, mm -hmm. and coughing. And these stay airborne for three hours, right? That's what I've heard, at least. Because it's not yeah. a very <laughs> in-the-air disease, basically. No. 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 Okay. No. Now that's why the contacts is really Im uh, important. So when someone sneezes or coughs, that's the moment of potential yeah. Yeah. spread. Yeah. So why does it then spread exponentially and not linearly? It's the question that, that has been raised. So. Well, for, from <laughs> each case, they have a potential to spread one to five pe persons. So and that that's actually the exponentially spread, exponential mm. spread. And what we will do with all those uh, measures that are now out there, um, really try to to make it more one than five persons to spread it. Yeah, yeah. So a question on Facebook from Harm: Can Corona infected people without symptoms or with mild symptoms infect others? Yeah. Well, we we. At, at, with mild symptoms, that's definitely true. Uh, when we look at uh, all the possibilities to spread the coronavirus, um, that it is the case that even in people without symptoms, coronavirus can be there. You can test it, 
but it, we don't think it is, has a major uh, possibility to, 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 to take part in the spread of the, the whole outbreak. Mm. So um, we expect, for instance, that it's less than 1% of all the spread out there is from asymptomatic patients. So you need symptoms uh, to really be part of the spread of the coronavirus. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. of course, mm. the more symptoms you have, the more p possibilities for spread. But even with um, mild symptoms, as, as soon as you have mild symptoms, Take measures. The, the, no, this, they are really caused by the virus, so the virus is there already then. Mm. So that's why we really ask all the people that when you have symptoms, stay home and don't, well, uh, don't have contact with other persons. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, I think that this sets a nice basis for the rest of the discussion we'll be having in a bit. Um, there's a question now being typed in the chat. We will take this question after the video because we'll have a 40 second video with questions for our panel. Uh, yeah, I think we can roll it. In the sense of washing your hands, uh, sometimes uh, your hands might get sore or uh, get open wounds in it. Might it be um, even worse for the viruses, for example, to get in if you wash your hands too often, or is that no problem? When is this thing going to be over? Because no one can actually say, like, we can be in the situation where um, we have uh, football stadiums that are not full of fans. Um, we can have this situation for the next few months and we don't really know what's going on. So uh, that would be my only question. When do you see an end coming to this pandemic? Yeah, should I address it yeah. to the camera? Okay, my question to the expert. Well, it's a personal question. The thing is, I'm getting married in August and I'm wondering, do you think I can even get married with visitors? Or do you think these private events will be because parties are being cancelled now, everything's being cancelled, but I mean, a wedding, would that have to be cancelled as well? This would be a question that I'm worried about right now. Concern about if they were able to go back, because this is a very international um, university, and so there's a lot of concern of if, it is, if there is a possibility for them to go back uh, to their country. So what we've just seen were a few questions raised by students, which I will now relay to the panel. Mm -hmm. So the first one was, can you wash your hands too often? Uh, well, I think not really, but I think you should think about when you wash your hands. It should be reasonable when you do it and not, uh, well, any time, actually. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, it depends also on the, 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 the washing agent that you use, of oh, course, yeah, when sure. it's too, too uh, toxic for the, for the skin. Uh, of course, when you do it a uh, thousand times a day, then probably that will also, uh, your skin will suffer. But, uh, when you do it a bit wisely, then I think that's not the case. Uh, and then a very big one, and I think that's on everyone's mind at the moment, is how long will this situation last? Mm -hmm. uh, that's of course difficult to predict, predict but what we see from uh, China, for instance, they, the, the, the cases go down. Uh, and it started in December, so uh, from December to, uh, let's say, the end of March. Then we talk about four months, so it started here uh, a month ago, so then you can count. The yeah, first intervention started, I think, in January, isn't it? In, in uh, uh, China. In, in China, the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's a bit the same a bit here. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, sure. So maybe a bit more personal question that was asked is, events such as weddings where you really have this, this personal thing, can those events still happen? Can you invite guests over? Is it wise to do that? Yeah, the whole idea about these events uh, and why do we, we don't want them to take place uh, is actually to really lower the number of contacts we all have. So when you have a lot of contacts, then the possibility, of course, that the virus is spreading to uh, uh, people is much more uh, available. So. The whole thing about this uh, reducing events is really uh, trying to get the whole population to get less contact, so social distancing in a way. So get less, con uh, uh, less persons you, you visit. That's actually the way to really um, slow the epidemic down. Yeah, yeah. And then the final question in the video that was, can international students go back home or return to their country? Well, they can, but they don't have to. Okay. Depends on, of course, to which country you go back. Sometimes the situation might be there more worse than here. On the other hand, we are talking about students, so you are 
20 to 30 years, so you are the healthy guys. And when we look uh, on all those people who have an infection, 80% don't have any or mild symptoms, 20% have serious um, or more complicated systems, and five really tough ones. And uh, the highest risk factor is age. So I'm 62, I'm, I'm <laughs> under risk. So as a young student staying here, the, the risk of, of um, getting symptoms is quite, quite low. And um, even if you travel, but you come from other countries, you might quarantine in your, be under quarantine in your own country. Yeah. So, um, and this might be not only in your home, but they might put you into a kind of detention camp. So that's not pleasant too. So think twice before uh, you head home and uh, don't decide so quickly because fear is not uh, good advice. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is, yeah, that's a really good answer. That's yeah. a good answer, mm -hmm. yeah. So a question for you, uh, Helmut. Um, where and how to test yourself for, for COVID-19 if you have no symptoms? If you have no symptoms, no test. No needed. test. No. Okay. But, okay, then maybe the other question is <laughs> where to go test yourself if you have symptoms or think you have symptoms. They can tell you where to go to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, normally we don't test people. Uh, the, 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 the first thing is just stay home and uh, when you are sick, uh, finish the sickness uh, and the disease at home, and that's it. Just like we don't test flu. students, and especially after yesterday, we focus really now on those that are really vulnerable for the virus. So that's the elderly, that are people that are suffering from underlying disease. Uh, and uh, we don't test uh, the whole population, and especially not young people, because there is no need, especially what Helmut Brandt already said. Yeah, yeah. Then maybe another question mm -hmm. for, for you. Uh, what is your opinion on how the Dutch cabinet has reacted to the spread of the virus in comparison, in comparison to neighboring countries? Okay. Um, one issue, one special issue about the Dutch healthcare system is that it's a non-nonsense, no-nonsense uh, health system. They only do things where we have the evidence that they work. There is nothing done in this system that is uh, just for show or doesn't work. So um, the Dutch do only those measures where we know that they will work. And... Uh, so what they decided yesterday, and one could see it in the uh, discussion and the press conference, are suitable measures that have proven to be effective. So that's fine. But other countries do different things. For example, we will come to this later, I guess, closing schools. Um, and of course, if the Scandinavian countries uh, close their school, then worried Dutch parents will say, hey, the Scandinavians are doing, why are we not doing this? But the question should be, is it right to, to close the schools? Does it will have any effect? As we know now, the young uh, ones are not under risk. And if you force them to stay home, then the parents have to stay home. So, for example, taking Maastricht, then members of the hospital have to uh, stay home to take care of the kids. So this workforce is missing in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Workforce would m miss, be missed in the labs where we develop uh, vaccines and do studies on this. So there are side effects, perhaps unintentional side effects, of this. And another solution might be, hmm, fly in uh, the grandparents. But this is a high-risk group. We don't want uh, the grandparents yeah. to do this, because mm. then they might uh, uh, be infected. So you always have to make, as a politician, this uh, decision under risk. We all argue health is the most important thing. Yes, but we have to think about other issues too, and we have to do the balance. And that's the reason why we have politicians who take uh, the courage to say, we close it or we don't close it. On the other hand, please don't blame them by saying, oh, last week you told me the following, and this week you have changed your mind. Yes, this is a highly dynamic phase, so we might change our mind. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, when we have discussed last week uh, closure of the lectures at Maastricht University, no need. Situation uh, changed. The Dutch system is able to adapt to this. Yeah, that sounds mm -hmm. very fair. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, indeed, uh, maybe add something to that is that really we try to to work with the the situation that is really present. So don't be too f too early or don't be too late. Uh, nevertheless, of course, it's a great. So the risks in a country are, m might be different, 
that might be a reason that different countries take different uh, measures. But it's always uh, also a kind of um, uh, gradient where you take some risk or you say you, uh, because zero risk is not possible. Um, so even, for instance, the schools and the daycare centers to close them, it is a possibility. But uh, as, as told, it's, it's not a, a large part of the transmission potential. And that's why uh, you have to always make choices. So the choices are always a balance, a balance between the bad things and the good things that you came, come out. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why we have a, a structure in the Netherlands where actually experts are the first ones to give advice. I'm actually one of the experts that is in the uh, national outbreak management team. And we discussed all these measures and uh, by discussing them based on evidence, and that's something that goes to the ministry and uh, discussed there. Uh, and, and then these measures come out and they really are um, related to the phase the Netherlands is in. So three weeks ago, most cases that we had in the Netherlands were really traceable. So we looked at them and uh, we had hundreds of people in uh, monitoring or quarantine, so that people that weren't sick, and we had hundreds of cases that were in isolation. So when that works, then we could it contain it like SARS. Yeah. But when the when the, 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 the epidemic approaches or, or uh, progresses, then it then it's different. So in this situation, we see that a lot of cases are not traceable anymore. So that we see cases that are that they don't have a patient zero. A lot of people know about this. So you you can't trace it back to a source. Yeah. And that's the situation now in the Netherlands, and that's actually the reason that we take more measures. And so that's, we, that's why we take it now. That's also an interesting question, then, like, if we talk about social distancing as well a little bit. Uh, should you stay home if you have no symptoms to prevent that you may get it or that you may spread it? Well, when you want zero risk, yeah, you have to stay at home. But there is a kind of balance also here. So what we say is when people, uh, please... Uh, do social distancing, so don't come to uh, places where a lot of people come, because then the chance that you can pick up this coronavirus is more easy, uh, and stay home when you are sick. So when everybody does this, this has enormous impact on the spread of the virus in the community, in the population. And when we do that, that's why we really uh, uh, emphasize that this is the, the way we want to uh, approach this, uh, this outbreak. So They're very okay. simple measures. For example, um, every time, f 10 minutes before Albert Heijn closes, all the students jump in and buy the, uh, their groceries. <laughs> I know it's a habit, I did the same. Uh, <laughs> uh, but then if you, if you are a little more and more an anxious character, uh, go shopping when not so many people are in. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, uh, um, as a student, you have some possibility to uh, uh, do this. So should you <laughs> reduce your social contact basically to just going to the store on, on low times and then stay home for most of the rest of the day. That would be the best solution no, to the issue. No, 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 uh, not needed, not needed. You mm. would, many, of course, you can do it, it like uh, uh, um, positive fatalism. Yeah, I stay at home, read a good book, uh, you know, book the thing, a lot of pages, mm -hmm. uh, not online. But um, uh, that is not needed. You, uh, it's just not to go to events that have more. The new magic number is 30 people. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, you can meet people that you know. Uh, no problem, but uh, don't go to mass events. That's the message. That's yeah, and good. stay at home when you have symptoms. And when you have, then it's a different story. Yeah. Then yeah. it's yeah. a different. Yeah. So will we? That's maybe then the the future outlook. Italy is now in a huge quarantine uh, phase. So will we find ourselves in the same situation as Italy in the future? Where? Oh, well, yeah. Well. Uh, not in the way they do they deal with it. No, no, of course. Uh, but um, yeah, well, we try to 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 really um, uh, mitigate this uh, outbreak. But of course, there will be a lot of patients, and that's why we really focus on continuity of care. For instance, so uh, our care is now trying to uh, go with this scenario and really try to reorganize their healthcare system, hmm. um, where the focus, so for instance, elective procedures are postponed. Uh, they have to really focus on how to deal with a lot of corona patients. They are already, they are already preparing for that. 
So they have two tasks, corona pa patients and first aid. Yeah. So the, yeah. f the focus of the health hospitals will be different. Um, and, uh, well, we need uh, sometimes tough choices in the future. Yeah. Because this is really what Corona uh, asks us. So do we have enough hospital beds in the Netherlands to prepare ourselves for, well, normal cases and Corona cases? Are we ready for this? Yeah, uh, we hope to do, uh, to, we hope that we have enough beds and uh, especially also ICU beds uh, by um, uh, diminishing elective care uh, and um, set up special um, uh, departments, wards, uh, uh, wards for uh, corona patients. And we are sh shifting uh, s specialists into different groups where they work in. Uh, some groups for uh, internal medicine doctors, they are going to deal with the uh, corona patients and others are doing the elective care. Yeah. And that's how we try to rearrange all the care in the hospital. Hmm. Yeah. But sometimes uh, uh, there will be Stage, uh, there will be a stage when there has to be tough t choices. Yeah. Who's the one that gets the ICU bed? Yeah. And then you come in a kind of triage system. And that really means that some have a lot of chance and some don't have that lot of chance. So that means like someone gets the ICU bed with, uh, uh, so they get a green stamp, for instance, and the other one is red. And then that can be the, the case in the Netherlands as well. Okay. And that's the reason why all the youngsters in the society have to behave well to protect those who might suffer that are the older ones think of me <laughs> <laughs> uh, might need this bed. and exactly. since I said for yeah. Monday and we only will drive 100 kilometers per yes. hour on yeah. the highways yes. perhaps this will reduce the accidents and please drive carefully with your bike don't <laughs> add to the workload by having an accident that, that is a fair thing yeah, yeah. so for you, uh, what are the consequences of fast virus mutation? Is a question being asked. <laughs> it can be two ways, actually. I think it can be more severe and it can be less severe. Mm -hmm. And if it's less severe, then it's spreading, I think, more easily. Mm -hmm. But of course, then you have not so many um, uh, severe cases. Uh, and if it's changing uh, to a, a variant that it's more severe, then we will get many more severe cases, yeah, yeah. but we, we don't know, we don't know actually. Okay, that's a, that's a very yeah. valid answer. Although, although you, you need to know that the, the, the virus is always a little bit different. So what we yeah. did now, for instance, in the Netherlands, there was um, um, a, a group of uh, um, healthcare employees that, we, that were tested in, the, in, yeah. in a different yeah. hospital, uh, and 10% turned out to be positive. Uh, what I do, th what I did, so you can make a kind of fingerprint of uh, each um, virus, and what you could see is that there were already quite some differences. Hmm. So what it also says is that there is already spread in the environment because the sources were different. Um, so that's something what we can yeah. learn from the virus by by doing well more kind uh, of uh, yeah, molecular uh, yeah. techniques. And I think so far these uh, differences are not really having any um, uh, how do you say consequences for the severity. Mm. No, not for no. the symptoms no. or uh, etc. So no. yeah, yeah. Um, and also, which, which is what is interesting, I would say, is that uh, everything is connected, of course. So virus is connected with social interaction, but also with the climate change. And we're going back into spring, into summer in a bit. How will warm weather affect the COVID-19 virus, actually? <laughs> like, yeah, actually, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a really interesting question, of course, because, uh, yes. well, based on, the, on, on, on data of other coronaviruses, you might assume that there is some effect. Because what we see normally is that the number of infections with other coronaviruses indeed diminish in summer. Uh, and of course, we know that also from the flu virus or other viruses. But really, this is a new virus and we still are not in the summer. So um, we don't know. And of course, you can also see when you, you, you map the, 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 the chart of the, the world, you see... You don't see that many cases in Africa, for instance, and then you might think, oh, that's working there. But that's probably another issue because uh, a lot of countries don't test that much. Mm -hmm. And especially when the healthcare system is not sufficient enough to test for this uh, virus, then of course you see that don't see cases. Mm -hmm. So be really careful by um, uh, looking at different countries and the numbers because those numbers might be only uh, the tip of the iceberg what's really going on in that country. Uh, and 
Well, that's that's true for even the differences between Europe. Okay. So is that also a reason why we don't have a European policy on coronavirus at the moment yet, at least? Because we well, don't know how every country reacts. Yeah, well, the, the, the big problem is um, the times where one size fits all is out. Yeah, you should uh, take local circumstances in account. And uh, the other issue is Europe, especially the European Union, is a kind of sensitive group of the member states. There is no kingdom of king or queen of Europe <laughs> that can decide we do it now this way. And then uh, we have all those different cultures. What might be applicable in the Scandinavian countries might be a no-go in Spain. And uh, the situation is totally different. Uh, the Dutch always call themselves a small country. You know, you're not, uh, you're double the size of Austria here. But uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's very crowded in the Netherlands, at least at some parts. So the situation here mm. is totally different when you look at oh, Poland, Finland, Finland, oh. where you have mm. huge areas uh, where you can do farming. That is a totally different approach there. Then we have to see that the financial means are different. Um, in, a, in a very well elaborated uh, society, you can do much more. And uh, those who are lagging behind, uh, let's have a look um, at Bulgaria or Romania, uh, this is a totally different uh, uh, situation. So, you can do it. So, what is there is that there is communication. After that, uh, ECDC was uh, started, not to come confused with ACDC, <laughs> there's something different, <laughs> the European Center for Disease Control. So prevention and disease control was started to, to help to exchange information about what's going on. And they did one very clever thing. Um, they took young students or young professionals and uh, offered them a training scheme. And this, they call them APIET fellows, mm -hmm. uh, uh, are now everywhere. So you have now a network uh, where you have people who were trained in the, in the same grounds with the same material, mm -hmm. and they all have all the addresses on their smartphone. So you can call in each country one someone you know who has the same background mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. And this makes a real difference. So in former times, when we had not this, every country was like, oh, let's close the borders. No, don't let the, uh, uh, the foreigners in. They will bring uh, those uh, dread, uh, dreadful diseases. Now, that changed a lot uh, because we see that... Um, a virus does not have a passport, does not uh, <laughs> uh, respect borders, so it does not make sense. Even if we would say, let's close down Schiphol Airport, what, what would you students do? You will fly from Brussels, Düsseldorf, so at least those three countries have to agree on certain measures. And uh, this is a European sto uh, story. It's unity in diversity. The diversity is that we have different situations in different countries, even different languages, um, on the other hand, uh, we know what is working, so let's adopt for this. And then we need a one center on European level that is not ordering, you have to do the following. No, that is giving advice, collecting the information and training people. Okay, it's a long time measure, but now we see the first uh, benefits uh, that uh, our APIAT fellows are everywhere and we can rely on them. Yeah. So, would you then say that, for example, what President Trump has done by banning all flights from Europe for the next 30 days, is that a measure that is it's not totally working? ridiculous? It's ridiculous, it's, okay. Yeah. It's reasonable. It's an and an especially order. to leave the uh, UK out, because yeah. they have the lowest number of, of strong measures. Mm. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, well, the, I, I think the, 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 it makes it also really challenging. So, to, to, it's, it's really a dilemma, of course. In a way, it would be nice that all the countries have a kind of same framework. Yeah. And especially here, uh, where we live uh, here in uh, Maastricht, uh, with surrounding, uh, well, we are surrounded for 95% actually by uh, Germany and uh, Belgium. Uh, also, from a public health point of view, it's really difficult to uh, implement uh, these, these measures because we have a border, but that border is in a way a very fluid border. Uh, we have Dutch people living in Germany and working in the Netherlands, or uh, German people living in Germany but working in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, but also they have children, they have children in uh, uh, kindergarten in uh, Germany, for instance, or... So mm -hmm. this, this is really uh, different. And, and then when that, those countries have different measures, it's, of course, a really tough job to, to, to handle this. Mm -hmm. And that's also something, I think, in the, in the community of students. They come from all kinds of countries. They have different cultural backgrounds. 
and from the different uh, perspective of their countries, uh, there are all kinds of arguments behind it, but it's sometimes difficult to, to grasp that by just looking at the measures. Uh, we just discussed the, 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 the thing of closing down schools. And of course, there is kind of idea about what it would help closing down schools, but not so much. And some countries would like to express a lot of uh, work they do, but we think it's symbolic, for instance, from the Dutch part, point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, so all those measures of, tre of uh, uh, temperature on, on borders, it's ridiculous. Uh, False of course, sense of security. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Sim it's, it's symbolic measures uh, because, yeah, of course, you can sometimes find someone with a higher temperature, although you have to discuss how, how well m measured these uh, mm. things are because uh, th that's also an issue. Uh, and also uh, uh, spreading uh, disinfectant on the streets. It's, uh, I don't see any clue in that why that, would be wor why that would be working. Because what we know about the coronavirus till now is that it's, um, it can last a few days, but it's really uh, um, re the reduction of uh, vitality or viability of the virus is reducing really, really fast. Hmm. So although we have really sensitive tests to measure it and, and you can sometimes find it, uh, that doesn't mean that it is really infectious. Um, and why do a lot of efforts on these kind mm. of measures while they don't do really, are, they are not really effective in managing uh, an outbreak. Yeah, the symbolic policies, you know, for those who, who study political science, you, you, they will know it for the other students, that it, it uh, has a kind of logic. Closing schools might be useful, measuring uh, temperature, that's great, good idea, on the first side. But uh, um, this has unintentional side effects, at, as we discussed already, that might have a much bigger impact. So, uh, for example, here, being now in the Netherlands, the government is willing to get this criticism. Yeah? You're not doing this, you're not doing that. Yeah, because a lot of uh, students said that the yeah. university should have closed down a week ago, basically. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, it's understandable from personal perception, the psychology students will know this now, and, <laughs> uh, but it's not good uh, for the public health. That's the European public health students that uh, will argue uh, mm -hmm. uh, this way. So we have to make this trade-off again. Yeah. And, and uh, this trade-off, the result, might change over time. And I think we have still to repeat it two times, then everyone understood it. Uh, uh, that uh, there will be changes in the regime that we run. Yeah. It will depend on actual facts and measures what we know. Um, we don't know exactly the infection rate, when it will be, we will know in two years. And then, of course, some scientists will come up and say, oh, the Dutch um, overrated it or underrated it. Of but course, that's, that's inside. That's yeah. our fate. Yeah. Yeah? Later we will know more. Mm. But we should not blame those people who are doing decisions now. Normally that are uh, quite rational people. Yeah? Yeah. And we had the chance when we elected them. To, yeah. to select the, the, <laughs> the right ones, uh, uh, mostly. Uh, <laughs> and there is, and now again to the university, scientific advice. Uh, we should strengthen our efforts to give advice for policymakers in a way that is understandable and that is really helpful. You know, uh, uh, there is this saying, I love one-armed epidemiologists. When you ask an epidemiologist a question, what shall we do, they will always say, on the one hand and on the other hand. <laughs> so uh, this happens not when you have a one up, uh, yeah. but then you really have to pinpoint down what your advice is. And uh, we three here agree. That's rare for scientists. <laughs> they, they agree. Um, but we have to wrap it in a way, this, this message, that uh, a policymaker can act on this. And uh, when you look at TV, you often see that there is a policymaker and the head of a national institute of health or something, both in this, uh, I mean, that's important. You are on the boards, mm -hmm. the advising. That's a very important thing that um, the university has a kind of transmission belt mm -hmm. to policymaker. And we are not sitting like uh, corona infected people in our chamber and once a year mm. we put a new paper uh, <laughs> down the door, yeah. uh, through the door. So... Um, what the students, for example, can learn from this situation is, yes, you have to know your science, but we have to learn to how to communicate this.
Ja. Mm. Ja, communication is heel, very, uh, very important. Very important. But also that, that, that you always have a choice. It's, it's a choice. And the choice is a kind of black and white. It's closing or not closing. But there is a kind of gray scale behind it. And of course, in time, some already say, oh, it's too early. Or some say, it's too late. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can always say that. Yeah. And especially in hindsight. When you, you look back, of course, you always know best. You know best. But we uh, act actually in, a, in, in well, um, circumstances that not everything is clear yet. And then you have to make decisions and you have to time them as good as you can do it. Yeah. Um, and that's, and that's uh, challenging, tough, but also, um, yeah, that's the way it, it should go. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I see that we have some questions from the chat, actually. Uh, they're maybe not related to the topic that we're talking about at the moment, but let's answer them still. How long does one need to be hospitalized in case of COVID-19? <laughs> Until you recover, I think. <laughs> like Until you are well enough to uh, go home, actually. Yeah. And that yeah, depends, it, actually. Yeah. It really depends? It's, it's yeah, it yeah. really depends. Yeah. Uh, uh, some are... On your uh, underlying condition, on mm, mm. you well, your own health. But sometimes it takes much longer and sometimes it's only a week. But uh, so that, it depends on so many mm. things. It's really an individual uh, okay. story there. Okay. Especially when we talk about the hospitalized yes. persons. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, another question was, what about symptoms such as vomiting and diarrhea? Should one stay home as well if you have, the, uh, if you have it? <laughs> it's a totally different field. So corona is not, at, well, it is possible to find some corona in the stools, yes. but that's not yeah. an issue. Actually, this is, corona is really an, an, an respiratory tract infection, especially upper rep respiratory tract infection. Uh, uh, in general, is th this is always uh, an advice that also in this situation you should wash your hands because especially uh, more gastrointestinal viruses can be spread yeah. as well. Uh, and then you have to be uh, deal with it in a hygienic way uh, yeah. and, and have some personal hygiene. Yeah. Uh, so normally that is not the case that we say to everybody, stay home. No, no, but still, yeah. be, be clean and be yeah, hygienic. Sure. Yeah, yeah yes. right. Uh, and then also, yes. can you reinfect? Can you be reinfected after your recovery? <laughs> uh, that's a really interesting uh, yeah. topic because it's a kind of a discussion. What we see is that there are quite some patients uh, that are tested after they recover, and then they still see uh, mm -hmm. virus. So, but the discussion is a bit: if that is, is this really a reinfection? Because what we have is really sensitive mm -hmm. tests, and what we know from infections is that they can. Uh, even after an infection, you have, can have dead material, so dead DNA, mm -hmm. but still is able to be uh, detected in a test. Uh, because normally coronavirus gives you some uh, immunity yes. and it takes longer. Uh, maybe after a year it might be, but not in a few weeks. That's, that's not logical for what we know from viruses. Yeah. That's, that's, I think that's, that's clear on that part. Um, Perhaps we should look at the wider picture then a little bit. So the coronavirus has also affected daily life uh, policy in, in many different ways. And maybe start at the, at the point zero, which is uh, what is your opinion on the Chinese response in containing the COVID-19 virus? Well, that, um, you have to look at the country of China too. It's a top-down approach. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, um, and uh, they don't like bad news. <laughs> um, so, uh, in, in SARS and other cases, we saw a, a long delay of reporting and um, there are some international complications. The uh, um, World Health Organization uh, has some mandates regarding uh, this kind of outbreak uh, management, at least uh, giving advice for this. International health regulation is a, a term for this. Uh, but, for example, they are complicated. For example, Taiwan, you know, this little island in front of the... Uh, we have two Chinas, and the, and the cases from Taiwan are reported via mainland China, because mainland China is part of the United Nations, Taiwan not. So the, there was a delay regarding this. Took, booking this all together, the Chinese took their top-down approach again, and, but it was quicker than last time. Uh, and more transparent. More transparent, more information. Mm -hmm. And um, there were some hiccups with what is a case and what is not a case. Um, but the setting there um, 
Perhaps some of you visited uh, Chinese uh, cities uh, or you saw uh, movies or, or pictures of this very crowded, the markets, the, the people live ne next their animals. So that they are the origin of one of those uh, jumping uh, viruses from animal to human might happen is quite high. And um, the measures were drastic um, and uh, it took them quite a long time to contain this because they don't have the index case. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This yeah. index case, when you know where it comes from, Patient then, you can, then yeah. you can do this. And uh, that was lost in China, so they mm -hmm. really had uh, to go far. A lot of those measures would not be possible in this way here. So it's hard mm -hmm. to compare and one mm -hmm. should not compare. Yeah. For example, look at Singapore. Singapore has a totally different approach. It's top-down regulated too, but for example, there's high trust in the government. So uh, people not obeyed because of fear to the regulation, because they say, hey, good idea, and if they, they would have made some good thoughts, it's a smaller country, I know. But uh, there, for example, containment was much easier, because it's a totally different culture, Asian country too, but under totally different management. So then mm -hmm. maybe bring it back home a little bit to the Netherlands. Um, what actions does the Dutch government take now? We've seen, of course, the, 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 the press release yesterday by Rutte. Um, so can we maybe elaborate a little bit on that part? I guess, Christian? Yeah, well, well the, fir the first one is very important. So uh, all people that have some respiratory symptoms uh, should stay home. Uh, the other one we already discussed is uh, the, the, the uh, reduction of the number of events mm -hmm. with less than or, or with more than 100 uh, uh, persons uh, should be um, um, yeah, uh, closed, <laughs> so to yeah. say. Uh, and there were uh, another few. I don't have them all by head, I must say. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't have them either. I think <laughs> not even in my files, no. but I think that we have the clear, the basic ones uh, mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. And the whole idea behind all these measures was really to... to uh, improve social distancing and make the the, the, the spread go um, well less fast in the population. I guess that's also because that's what a lot of students say at the moment. This approach, and especially because it came yesterday, is the Dutch approach too lighthearted? I know we've talked a little bit about it, but maybe to reinforce the point, I guess you could elaborate a little bit further on that. Yeah. Well, the reason that it was yesterday that we did it was that we saw differences in our Dutch situation of the epidemic. So that is the, really the reason. Um, well, before that, we were in the containment phase. So that is really that we look for all those cases. And at that moment, so in the week uh, prior to this, this new uh, set of measures, we really saw that we couldn't find all the well, let's say patient zeros mm -hmm. of new patients. So there popped up uh, patients in the hospitals that were, well, not expected. Um, we have, uh, especially in Maastricht, we have a, a kind of surveillance uh, system uh, in place. So that means that all kinds of respiratory patients, so not really corona patients, but respiratory uh, patients were tested just to have a kind of... Uh, measure or kind of temperature into the population that is in the hospital. Yeah. Even we, we, there, we people came up. We tested actually all patients who were, uh, which were requested a flu test. We also tested on the background for coronavirus. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's a kind of, kind of uh, uh, a temperature measurement <laughs> if there is still a, a corona yeah, going yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and then we had a, a, a situation where we had a, a, a long-term care facility where we had a lot of cases uh, without any uh, source. So these kind of uh, things together show that there is spread in yeah. the population. And then we saw that the, 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 the criteria for being a case, so coughing with fever and, well, connection to a corona case, was not uh, applicable for all cases anymore. So these two were major reasons to really change the the face of the the the, the outbreak where we yeah. are in yeah no um, conspiracy hmm? no conspiracy story no oh. conspiracy <laughs> no so, just good thinking but that's also uh, do you do you think that the um is doing enough to protect the students and the staff for for it at the moment 
to, can we can we say something about that? Well, actually, that's not the the the, the reason what we are doing. We are doing. It's, it's not that we are going to... In the first phase, we are trying to think about how we can protect the population. Mm -hmm. So that was the contagion phase, containment phase. There, we really try to, to uh, like SARS, contain the whole situation. Now we have said it's not possible anymore. So we are, our goal is now no longer the population. Our goal is those that are really suffer from corona. So those that are really suffering from corona is on one hand the elderly and vulnerable people with underlying conditions and on the other hand our healthcare system because we really want our healthcare system to help those in need yes and that's where we are really focused on so we are not trying to protect everybody to get for coronavirus because we know especially in young people and students it's not so much an issue yeah it's not a problem to have the coronavirus infection. I think then, one final question before we go to the wrap-up. Uh, there's a lot of panic as well around this, this, this virus. And what we saw, especially yesterday actually, that a lot of people went into the store, bought all, bought all the toilet paper, <laughs> bought all the hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Is this type of, of behavior uh, too much? Or is it reasonable? <laughs> uh, well, that's always the case that it's, it, I think it's too, too much, but it's also contagious. <laughs> the behavior is <laughs> contagious as well. Seeing people doing that makes other people doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something we, we well, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting phenomenon. Uh, but what we know is for the Netherlands, uh, there are no shortages in, in groceries. Uh, and of course, especially the, the, the toilet paper, for instance, yeah. that is a kind of hype, I think, even from Australia it's or Australia. something. There was a shortage and, and somehow in the Netherlands we're going to, mm -hmm. to, to, to buy a lot of toilet paper. Um, there is a lot of irrational behavior, of course, surrounding this whole epidemic. Uh, and uh, that's uh, something that we know with. that is uh, uh, present in these kind of situations. Okay. There, there are uh, some bachelor and master students now working on the thesis. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we can su uh, suggest some new topics for them uh, <laughs> in use of the situation because this is a natural experiment. We are Absolutely. in the middle of the yeah. storm uh, yeah. and uh, it would be good if uh, some people uh, would do some interviews. No, why are you buying toilet paper at the moment? <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. So perhaps then for a final wrap-up, verdict, uh, comments that you want to make before we close this off. Maybe start with uh, Helmut, maybe you want yeah. to start? Um, we now accounted three times we said, you are not the one who are under uh, threat, uh, but please behave well uh, to take care so that your uh, parents and grandparents don't get ill because they might end up otherwise in hospital. So you have an obligation now to them. And uh, one word to the sponsors of our students, formerly known as parents. <laughs> uh, there is no danger for your kids in Maastricht. Um, when you follow this, uh, you uh, will now understand why, how those things uh, lock together. So don't ask them to jump on the next flight. Uh, think first before you decide. Uh, that's the other. And um, we should uh, think ahead. At the moment, we are managing the situation. But um, make some notes about what you saw and what was disturbing or what was something one should think of. And after a year, we should uh, uh, make another session and looking back. Yeah. Because <laughs> the situation will be that there are estimates 50 to 60, some say even 70 percent of the population will get infected in the next two years with this uh, mm -hmm. uh, virus. Very mild, not a bit. But if we have those 5 percent, 5% uh, that are suffering, 5% uh, of a high number are a lot of cases. And 5% of a low number are a few cases. And that's my personal uh, plea, a pledge to you, plea to you. Please uh, stick to this uh, personal protection guidelines. It's helping you and it's helping society. Thank you. Christian, your final verdict? Yeah, um, um, in my case, I would say something about uh, when you have some uh, symptoms, uh, please stay home and don't call for everything your general practitioner. Uh, let really try to uh, lower the demands of our healthcare uh, in, in at these these challenging times. Um, so stay home. Uh, it's especially when it's a mild disease. 
there's no, nothing to worry about. And of course, when it's really serious, mm -hmm. then you can call. Don't go to the general practitioner, but call first uh, so that we can contain this uh, situation as much as we can. Thank you. Yeah. Inge, final remarks? Yeah, I completely agree with uh, Christian. And, uh, um, I, I can add to that that we are preparing in the hospital for the severe cases mm -hmm. um, in these times. That's all good to know. Yeah. Then I would like to close off. I would also like to remind people watching at the moment that you can always contact the help desk at UM if you think you have symptoms, if there is any problems, do not hesitate to contact them. Also because the university will suspend all physical classes from Monday onwards. Um, there are options to call these people uh, via mail or via Facebook. You can always contact us. And, and with that, I would like to close down this live stream and see you another time. Have a good weekend.